Welcome back to the Quickport tutorial. In this final tutorial, I'm just going to drill down a little bit more on the on the Quickport user interface so that you can see the full power of the software. Now, um, across the top, we've got a, a system of toolbars which are tabbed um, so they're in all grouped nicely uh, according to what uh, what they do. Uh, we we'll go back to lines, uh, and then across the bottom we've got a set of um, tabs which really sort of change the view on the data. They change the diagram up here. So um, it, it's a, a very sophisticated user interface. You're not stuck with the geometry uh, which is covered by Input Wizard. Um, I'm just going to show you something now. I'm going to add some dimensions to this uh, to this drawing. Um, simple as, um, and uh, I, I've got to just show you how you would add a, a mezzanine floor in here. So I'm going to go to the lines tool, perpendicular line. Um, if you look down here, you can see the, 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 the prompt is showing you to click near a point and perpendicular to which line there. Um, so we've now got a line that goes through the base. I'm going to take another parallel line and I'm going to make it oh, uh, uh, nine meters, say, parallel to this one. Um, and another line, uh, 2. Well, 6 will do. I was going to do 2.5 parallel to this one. And then we can go to the members tool and we can add a member from there to there to there to there. And there's also, um, we can go to object mode, which means we can select things and uh, modify them if we wish. Um, and we can drag things. So I'm going to select this base, hold the control key down and uh, uh, drag the base over. I actually didn't take the control key there, did it? And drag it back. Okay. Um, and uh, obviously, with these beams, if we, if we went to the uh, loads tool, then we're currently under removable dead. But if I put it to imposed, and uh, I could add a vertical imposed load five, and I click on the member acting towards, we've got a vertical load on that member. Um, one other thing that's probably worth looking at under Perlin's. Um, we could add a continuous restraint to this member and uh, that would model the effect of the restraint of the uh, of the floor slab um, if we select this restraint right click go to the restraint properties um, program works the same way right the way through you select something you right click and then you alter its properties then we could take uh, the bottom flange restraint off of that beam um, and look at the axial restraints um, we would say that it does not provide in plane only out of plane restraint and that would model what a floor slab would do um, okay so i'm going to close that um, so and it's worth pointing out that although you couldn't go back to input wizard with this new frame um, you can still run design wizard on it in fact, you would want to run Design Wizard to um, size these uh, size these members and to see the effect that those members have on the rest of the frame. And of course, you could run Check Wizard, and Check Wizard would uh, still apply uh, the second order effects and uh, the elastic critical load, and so on and so forth. Um, so, I'm not going to purpose this tutorial I'm not going to finally size these members so I'm going to take them off again and the easiest way to do that is hit the back button right so we're going to carry on across the bottom of the screen I think uh, with the limits are the deflection limits um, I think I spoke about the fact you can have a relative deflection limit as well um, the loads form uh, these are the loads on the frame uh, imposed snow a little bit more interesting the wind uh, this is the true view which is a a nice view uh, of the frame which you would want to submit to clients 
these are the axial forces. Now, obviously this is for, it actually says serviceability limit state imposed there, but if we go to dead and imposed, this is for dead and imposed. These are the shear forces, this is the bend and moment. Um, so if we look at um, dead and wind, we can see the reversal case. I'm going to set it back to dead and pose. This is a capacity. We can see the unity factors and the fact that the sections are actually class two. Um, this, this is the uh, stability uh, diagram. Um, and again, it's for dead plus imposed. Um, if we wanted to see the effect of taking one of these stays off, if you didn't believe it was necessary from our previous work, then we could select the stay tool and take the stay off, put it back on, add the stay, take it back off, stay off, stay on, and it instantly updates. Uh, deflections, deflected form, although this is for factored load, of course. Um, but if we looked at SLS imposed, we can see green ticks by it all, which is what we'd expect. And then finally, we have the results tab. This form pops up, reminding us that we need to uh, fill out certain details like our initials for design by um, company address, project title and file description, etc. So I click OK. It's now compiling the results, and this is the first page of the uh, of the um, quick port results, which we can page through by hitting the page up, page down key. Um, it's a very fast program. If we go to the end, there's actually 354 pages of results. And that might be a problem for some. Um, different engineers view it differently. Um, it's easier nowadays because we can print to PDF uh, rather than actually print to paper. But we can control um, we can control the uh, the quantity of the output. If I right click here and select results contents, then we have this tree Eurocode three, um, and basically we drill down um, and we could what we would do is we would deselect some of the items in here. Output. Um, so under linear elastic analysis, um, pretty much every combination has got output. But um, what we could do is just right click, deselect all. And there's a special tool for smart select. So it's all controllable within this form. I'm going to cancel out of that. And I think that's about it, apart from the fact I just want to mention, if we go back to the bend a moment diagram, if a select a member, right click, member results, we've seen this before, these are the calculations for the member. And these are detailed. We can, can even control the amount here. This is worst, but I'm going to set it to within 80% of worst. So we will now get more checks. Oh, not a lot more actually. Let's um, let's uh, set it to show, and we'll now see all the results. These are the capacity checks, and down here we can see uh, the stability checks. Okay, and this is. You know, everything is there. Thank you for watching.